Hello, Adam Rayner, Talk Audio TV. And once again, I'm sat inside this beautiful Audi Q7. I can tell you that since uh, I've had my go first, the most famous motoring journalists in the whole of the UK have had a go on it as well, and they really quite liked it. They said that for a hybrid, it still drove like a proper car. Um, and also that uh, it actually got the figures that it was claiming, which is a delight for the ears of the gentleman who's back at the head, you can see. That's Mr. Alex Fisk. Hello, Alex. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Gentleman's going to be driving us around a little bit today because whilst I did get some of the detail last time, there are a couple of things in particular I really didn't get. And the first one is, let's just have a zoom in on this sat-nav. Now, apart from the fact that it is rather tremendous, let's get in there, so I'll let the focus do its thing. Um, uh, Keen-eyed viewers may actually spot that that is not just a map. That looks like Google Earth, Alex. It certainly is, Adam. And we can zoom all the way out and all the way in as well. Oh so my gosh, uh, that's uh, I'm zoomed in on the screen on the dash, and you're doing amazing things on the uh, the binnacle. Let me just zoom back on there and go over to the binnacle, and you probably have to put your head right to one side. Go and put your head to one side so I can see that. <laughs> Let's zoom in on that. Show me that again on there. That's so you can zoom word. right out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello Europe. Hello world. Hello world. <laughs> <laughs> that is Google Earth. And Actually, then... Google Earth images on there. So, is this working as a, a hotspot? Are we? Do we have our own subscription to? Um, does the car have its own SIM card? Basically. Yes, it does. Uh, so you don't have to pay for that SIM card because of the uh, setup we have in this model here today. Oh my word! Uh, yes. It's a subscription that's catered for, and um, as long as you have internet connection, then it will provide you with the Google Earth on your dashboard. The Can first you? time I saw this was on an aftermarket piece by a company called Pioneer, and that was a rather expensive overlaying of a couple of bits of tech. And I remember marvelling how, like that James Bond movie it was, this is way upstream of that. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, doke like, so let's, uh, let's uh, have a little look at this head-up display here and uh, zoom on in. Right now I've, I've twiddled the camera into a bit of screen, but there's nothing showing. I'm twiddling the thing on the front of it, and like magic, the uh, head-up display comes into view. Now I'm going to move to uh, manual focus and twiddle it till we can see that nice and crisply. And this really is the uh, star of the piece. Do do set off, dear boy. Let's have a... Uh, let's go. Oh, of course, in total silence. Of course. <laughs> yes. Gosh, this is so strange. Now, uh, because we're in 4K, we can actually see that this is a perfect reflection of what is effectively a reverse image video screen lying on its back on the top of the dashboard. Head-up display, of course, a technology, I, I believe it was first like military fighter jets, wasn't it, Alex? Do you hear about that? I believe so, yes. Yes. And here it is in Audis. Now, uh, never really managed to capture this terribly well before, but uh, you will have to, of course, forgive Mr. Fisk for getting his head actually in a position where he can drive safely, because right <laughs> now he's got to play. Well, I think the driving position we could describe this would be Ford Chav. You've sort of <laughs> a little bit laid back there. <laughs> now, uh, if I just lift that up a tiny little bit on that. Whoops, a little. There we go. What I'll do, Adam, is I'll uh, set a location and then you can see the other uh, areas that come up on the head up display. So uh, yes. it offers you a number of uh, prompts and screens such as when the adaptive cruise control is working it tells you when you're coming up to junctions and it can even slow the car down accelerate the car and it's all working away in the background and it just shows you what's going on on the head-up display as well it's quite remarkable how many different sets of complete information are going on in this car i think the hud is the um well it's a sort of special distillation it's really quite fun i remember being amused because there is one particular thing, which is a part of the eco package, which is uh, a set of little bits of biofeedback that make you take your foot off the gas, off the, off the yes. pedal. Um, and I, you know, I'd, I'd given it large, going, oh, I'm explaining it. But of course, when I'm actually driving it, I'm in a slight fugue of nervous motoristness. But as we came up to the roundabout, well, I'm sure we're going to see it. There was a, a little green symbol of a foot and a little tickly wobble that happened under my foot. I went, ooh, it just instinctively lifted my foot off the uh, the loud pedal a tiny bit and then chuckled at myself because although I knew about it academically, just on a purely emotional, here's how it works basis, <laughs> it had made me slow down. And 
you can see the adaptive cruise is working now so it's picking up the car in front i'm not touching the brake pedal at all whoa it's breaking like it means it so, yep indeed and what will happen in a moment is the predictive efficiency will set in and as you were just saying it will come up with the menus on the head-up display telling me when it's going to slow down and when it will speed up as well. So it's handily giving you the speed limit of the road there. Was that the speed of the uh, car in front? What's the, the, the speed reading on the left hand side? So that's what you have the adaptive cruise control set to. So oh, right. it's currently set to 60. Gotcha. And you can move the distances between the car in front up and down so if hopefully you can see that there's five distance levels and so if I drop it down up and down you can see that there we should decide according to traffic density and speed itself, exactly of yes so that is braking itself now Wow <laughs> that is cool and it will accelerate again that's accelerating I have my feet aren't touching the pedals at all and round the roundabout we go. That's remarkable. And the speed's increasing. That's so much more advanced than what I was quite impressed by in the uh, motor car I've got. I remember uh, first finding out about that, but that is uh, impressive. What's the, uh, the little green bit up above the uh, the 5 or 45 there, Mike? Just uh, right next to the speed limit? Yes. So that is the radar um, symbol. Gotcha. So just showing that the radar is active and it's looking for any cars in yes, the front. My eyes are open, I'm looking down the road. It's, um, I've got a limited amount of resolution in here, although the viewers back home, because we've been able to fix this up in 4K will be, oh yes, I'm, uh, I just keep to know now while we're doing the film. Sure. And hopefully you can see there's another symbol that's um, appeared on the left. Yes. And that is to tell me that the car has picked up that there's a roundabout coming. And this oh. is part of oh. the oh. predictive efficiency assistant. So again, it will slow down and it will adapt its speed to the car in front. I'm not touching any pedals. It's just inputting the steering. Yes, that's wow. all you need to do. And if I, um, if I change the virtual cockpit display to this one, then it gives you some more information. Oh, when you say this one, I'm, I'm zoomed on the HUD ah, with sorry. a different twiddling of the... Um, I'll tell you what, um, I don't know if I can actually... Let's have a little go. It might be a little bit of a waste of a zoom, but yes, the uh, head-up display is still showing nice and clearly, but a bit more of the road showing there. There's uh, rather more detail showing on the um, the binnacle there, but frankly, short of decapitating Mr. Fisk, <laughs> <we're>, uh, <laughs> it's not going to be easy to uh, to show that doing the same one. Which is why we came back because there are two different sets of polarizations on the um, on the display. It's, Something which I accidentally have on the car, for, on the car, on the camera for filming fish. With a polarizing filter, you can see through the surface of a lake. But that is really rather crisp. I've uh, seen a few head-up displays. It's noticeably better resolution and brighter than the one in the A7, and that is quite easily attributable to better LED technology. They're brighter, they're more amazing. The displays in Las Vegas sort of more poke your eyes out. You want to see the screens Metallica are touring with. Yes, I did that since I last saw you, Alex. I went and did a, a, a review of the largest hi-fi in the world. Oh, that sounds fun. Which is an awful lot of loudspeakers in the O2 with a small beat combo called Metallica. <laughs> Very nice. That's a, that's a bit of a big systems review. It has quite a lot in common with what's going on in a car because there's lots of speakers in lots of places. There's digital delays, there's subwoofers. Um, and where the speakers go matters. It's not just two boxes for hi-fi. And it was great fun. Fiercely loud. <laughs> <coughs> well, it has to be said, the uh, sound pressure level in this here Audi can go all the way through to viscerally exciting. There is a threshold of excitement with audio. <laughs> I am strapped in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> My voice doppering away out of there was because I'm, I'm wearing waist belt, but yes. So I'm uh, eager to see the. Uh, other little bits and bobs there was that that magical green foot thing yes kind of cool to see so we're going to uh... so what it's telling me on the virtual cockpit now is that we are going into a corner uh -huh. and it's adapting the speed again to that and traffic lights green so it won't need to break for that but it's um, it will let me know I'll, what I'll do is I'll come back round and 
once there is enough space for the car to decelerate, uh, if you know if the parameters are correct, then it will give you that feedback that you felt on the accelerator pedal yes. before. So basically, as a, as a bit of a prompt to say, come off the gas. Yes. Yes, the uh, virtual cockpit is something we're definitely going to have to have another little rearrange of the camera and yes. put that out as well. This head-up display is fabulous. There was an aftermarket product uh, that the Pioneer tried. It was a bunch of brackets and a thing that was held in place. I think it went into your onboard diagnostic, not sure. Certainly leading tech. Gives you a bit of a flavour of what's to come really. So as you probably know we've recently brought out the new A8 and that's yes. the first series production car in the world to be developed for level 3 conditional autonomy and what that means wow. is that when you're on the motorway uh, when there's a physical barrier in the middle of the road and you've got lane markings that uh, when, once the car is fitted with the technology then up the speed of up to 37 miles an hour it can brake, accelerate and steer by itself so you could actually wow. watch a film on the central screen if you wanted to. Um, so that's, that's a massive three. step because the manufacturer will allow you to watch a video up to 37 miles an hour. Yes. Because of the autonomy. Exactly, yes. Whoa, that's an enormous, enormous political statement. It is, and... Huge, there's a millionaire or two out there whose entire wealth is down to the fact that in the past, the manufacturer could not permit you to watch video at all because were you distracted, you can say it's Audi's fault. However, if you decide to make the modification because your wife wants to watch Coronation Street on the way home, that's good. But that's a, a huge political change in, in stance. It is, and the law, well, I, the law is changing, and obviously the system will adapt to where it's, where it's allowed to be used. So it's all geo-fenced. So in some countries... Um, like it's legislation-aware. Yes. And, and compliant. Yes, so on the A9 in Germany, uh, one of their autobahns, big autobahn, it's legal to use the system there. Yes. Uh, they're one of the first, same as in some states in America, I believe. Wow, um, that's so cool. But obviously elsewhere you won't be able to use it, so the car is not going to let you use the function when it knows it's not permissible in that area. That's absolutely unique. The, uh, so I was so excited they let the, car, the camera swivel. That's absolutely unique. So. This is a whole collection of functions that are only extant because the car knows exactly where it is. It's yes. so wrapped into GPS. It's so far upstream of mere navigation. Gosh, <laughs> it's very 21st century, Mr. Fisk. And Pressed. this this car, uh, because this has the tour pack fitted to it, uh, which is some of the features you see here now, um, that encompasses some of that tech, but in its early stages, really. So. This has traffic jam assist on it, and that can steer once you're doing up to 37 miles an hour, again, in the same conditions. Yes. So on the motorway, uh, surrounded by traffic with proper lane markings and a physical barrier. Um, it will brake, steer, and accelerate. However, um, you have to have your hands on or close to the wheel like this, and because it has sensors there. So that was the next question. Where are the sensors? How does it do Yeah, so they, I believe they're in the steering wheel, so it's, wow. um, it senses the feedback. So if you do take your hands away, then it will stop the system and tell you to take over again. So it's a grip. Yeah. So <laughs> Sorry, it's. It's sucking my charger. In, amazing, though. Yeah, in, in this car, it's just to help you kind of wind down a bit in traffic and relax. and. The same can be said for the level three in the A8, yes. and it'll be coming again to the A7. These are all stepping stones, and one day there's yeah. going to be some kid, 2050, with a slightly old book that his granddad gave him 10 years ago, reading about the early days of autonomy, and marvelling how once upon a time they let people control their own cars, not yes. just only on tracks for fun. And they used to have explosions going on inside them and everything! Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool, that is a 
friend who went to a classic car show was musing about that. How in fact that the cars that were cool when he was a schoolboy are now classic motor cars to go to car shows. Mm. And that the early semi-autonomous motor cars are going to be objects of marvellingness. Oh, definitely. They're going to be gathered up at Blenheim Palace. 2014 classic car show. Yeah, this was this was launched. It's the 2018 model. It was launched in 2017. It's the A8. It was one of the very first. And but the geo fenced roads. That's uh, that's intense. Mm. All this technology and it's there, ready to be applied for according to as the legislators approve. That's so really. I can show you another feature in a moment as well. So when we join here so uh, again as part of the tour pack that has the traffic jam assist this car has active lane assist so if I press a button on the indicator store yep. you can probably see that two lines have come up um, I can from uh, yes although I can't of course see it on the, uh, the camera there but there's uh, so what that is doing is it's sensing the lane markings yes and if I try and steer out of the lane then it will push the car back in that's remarkable some uh, tremendously sensitive camera stuff isn't it the tech able to read and assess that and again it's all it's all part of the technology that will one day allow the car to do its full to drive mode literally to uh, yeah. have you let's play scrabble darling <laughs> <laughs> on so, my ipad 32 again if i take my hands off so the lines have gone out now so that indicates that the system isn't working so when the lines are green you yes. know the system's active so again I can take my hands off the wheel yes. now and it will steer me into the middle of the lane not advisable obviously but it's it's another safety system just keep it in the right place yeah if the driver was tired and they do happen to wander then the car's got their back basically the inadvertency of fatigue protected against Indeed. some other Okay, well, uh, I did uh, stop the video camera and start it up again because I've worked out a way to just look at the binnacle there. I'm leaning over and... Uh... So, Alex, tell us a little bit about what's going on directly in the dash. So that's called the virtual cockpit? It is, yes. So, it's standard on the Q7 e-tron. And what you can see the here, the screen I've got it set on, is it's showing the predictive efficiency assistant. So, hopefully you can see where it says roundabout. So, it's picked up that there's a roundabout coming. It's braking the car now, I'm not having to touch anything. And what the predictive efficiency assistant does is it will basically check the um, check the route, uh, topography of the road, and if there's an opportunity for the car to save some fuel, then it will do so. And Using the GPS? Yes. Knowing exactly where it is? Yes. Wow. And the, all you have to do is when, when a roundabout is coming up like that it's not a very well sighted roundabout that one so I initiated um, braking myself or I should say that I um, made the decision executive yes <laughs> because um, the car will brake down to a safe and sensible speed um, but it obviously can't see another car approaching that's already on the roundabout so the driver still has to brake if there's another car coming yes but it, what the car will do is freewheel or so decouple the clutch or brake if it means that it can save some fuel Excellent. coming up to that roundabout and again the car is freewheeling at the moment so it's again where, wherever there's any opportunity to do that so if I've come off the gas then it will use the um, the momentum of the car to just pull it along and then as soon as I touch the accelerator again you have the power again and away we go sorry about the wobbling camera viewers <laughs> but it's a winding country lane oops Focus on there. Oh. <laughs> it's quite a 
most remarkable, remarkable bit of dashboard technology there. It is, and you can... You're driving through Google Earth. I mean, there's nothing not cool about that. And you can have your rev counter back up again as you want it. <laughs> that is beautiful. There's various screens you can cycle through, so everything that you can see when you have the map in full display mode, you can have with the rev counter and the speedometer up as well. So I can see if I've got my driver assistance systems activated, the speed limit of this particular road we're on, also all the fuel consumption data, and then radio, and if your phone is connected, and then back to maps. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, but because this is an e-tron, there's a power meter, obviously, for when it's in its electric mode, uh -huh. but there's also a rev counter, and you can have either or, or both. And yes. I like it set on both, because then you can see when the engine is actually working, because when you're pulling away in this car, it will be in the all-electric mode, um, and when you get to a certain speed, or say if you accelerate harder, then it will engage the engine. But because this is obviously one of our flagship models, you, that transition is barely noticeable. Sometimes you just do not notice the transition at all. I couldn't um, believe I could actually feel gear changes happening. I could see it going on. Yeah, and the good thing is, you, you know when the engine is on because you can then see the rev counter working when the engine isn't on obviously it drops yes. down to zero because incidentally the refinement level of it is such that it doesn't rattle like a little yes see it's splendidly deliciously is it you know <laughs> <laughs> top right of the picture that mushroom shaped thing is a bang and olufsen tweeter that's motorized it's a silk dome it's lying on its back and it's reflecting its output in all directions it's slightly off the windscreen as well Part of the tremendous sound quality in here. Six thousand three hundred pounds worth option, and uh, it's well, you'd really be hard put to find any super specialist, no matter how clever, who could make it sound as good and as potent in here as that. Mag and Orson guys have got uh, a couple of algorithms going on. One is true stereo, they call it, with a little red mark, because you're sitting on the one side and it gives you a nice stereo image for the driver. And there was another name for another algorithm. Um, I was privileged enough to get a, a telephonic meeting with a gentleman from the Harmon Corporation, who was actually an ex-Bang uh, & Olufsen employee, because they, they purchased Bang & Olufsen, you know. They owned them. The chap had like three PhDs, I think, Alex. Oh, wow. It's a fascinating meeting. I've never been quite that corporately important on the phone. <laughs> but it was uh, truly gripping, because the whole three-dimensional sound in here and how it feels like it's spread out in front of you. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? It is indeed, yes. It's a, it really feels to me like a cinematic experience, actually. So what I'll do now, Adam, is I'll show you the navigation and how that comes up in the um, virtual cockpit and also the head-up display. Okay, so. <coughs> so I'll just set the destination now. And as you can see, it's come up with the the destination there, uh, the time we'll arrive, how many miles we've got to go, and how many miles until the next instruction for the navigation. There's also the blue line on the map. Showing you that that's you. Yes. And then also in the head-up display, you get the same same symbols showing you. a little twiddle of them, and you get the hunt. It's interesting because if I'm watching that head up display, I'm in run polarization. <laughs> and if I'm watching the depth of the binnacle, I'm in slightly another. I think I've got a bit of both. Slightly vertiginous. As it is. Polarization and zoom. You can see it showing what's going on there. I'll pull out a little bit down. Move the polarizer. 
Dunk. How fascinating. Yes. That's a uh, rotary polarizing filter. Used mostly for filming fish for the Angler's Mail. So, a specialist in car display technology for anybody else who wants to video this stuff. Explaining different degrees of polarization on in car head up displays is probably a bit more tech than just saying, I want to film fish, have you got the right filter? cool things that uh, you were talking about before which I couldn't actually zoom in on was the uh, car's ability to make you stick in um, between the lines. Yes, so... There was a fabulous bit of display there. Will we get the opportunity to do that again on the way back? We got oh, sure, back? sure. Excellent. So, so the car's telling me just to turn off left here and it uh -huh. also gives you an indication of when you need to turn. So as well as giving you the distance, once it's you get actually, a bit closer... It's almost a bit like a race track instructor tech breaker yes only uh, sensible road motorings uh, instead of turbo nutter lunacy yes god that really is holding your hand isn't it part of me has these sort of wondering about the corollary of what if you then get in a car that isn't nearly as clever and you've got used to having your hand held <laughs> 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 oh you should stay with the audi product yes it's uh well that's what i find with the um head-up display in particular you miss it is, yeah i definitely do once you've, once you've used it and got to look at it, yep. you go looking for it and go, oh, there's nothing there. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, so you can definitely look at the uh, head of display or the binnacle with the uh, polarising. Okay, so the active lane assist should work now when, once we come past the roundabout. Let's get in on that binnacle a bit better. There we go. And then you'll be able to see that in action. Adaptive cruise is on, and the lines have lit up green now, so that means the uh, active lane assist is also working. So, again, if I try and steer out of the lane, then it gently pushes me back in. You can just feel the resistance wow. through the steering wheel. It's a great shame we haven't got a D box in this video. D box being a system that actually puts a bunch of cues into the system so that the magical seat you're sitting in gets shaken around. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's the latest thing in cinema, Alex. And you'd feel the very slight steering corrections as the car has, well, frankly, a little difference of opinion. No, 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 no back onto the groove. So it's, again, that's slowing us down because there's some traffic in front. And this is a roundabout that is a lot better sighted than the one previously. Yes. So. I didn't need to brake at all there because I could see there were no cars yes. coming, so then the car does it all itself. Wow. So it's a lot more relaxing as well. Yes, that's, uh, that's quite remarkable seeing that degree of autonomy going on. Yeah, because I didn't have to touch any of the pedals yes. then. And you are still of course in control deciding whether or not to uh, apply any uh, extra braking because there is still the issue of how many directions the car can see in at once. Yes. That omnidirectional 360 degrees, seeing everything is still a bit emergent, isn't it? So the, the new A8, that can see everything. It has a laser scanner, it has um, LiDAR, it has radar, sensors all around the car. That's awesome. That, that's what allows it to um, to function with the level three autonomy uh, that I was talking about before. Um, again though, it's, you know, at the stage we're at at the moment, it's all about introducing the autonomous functions gradually and the driver will always be taking over when they need to. Just for those who aren't quite sure what there were a couple of terms Alex used there, LIDAR, it's a good buzz one. Um, I looked it up on Wikipedia, there is no correct definition as to whether you put a small I and a big L and it means light radar or laser radar, meaning it's light beams and the sensors are so incredibly, incredibly good that even at 186,000 miles a second, you can shine a laser beam at something and either tell how far away it is or what speed it's moving at. The coppers have had that for a bit, haven't they, Alex? <laughs> Just did a one particular. Oh, he's going that quick. <laughs> yes, I have a uh, device in my car that tells me when I've been nicked. <laughs> a laser detector. But if you've detected a laser, they have shoots on it. They have basically caught you if you're sitting. Here. 
the other thing to mention as well is that because we're in the efficiency mode at the moment once you pull away that affects how quickly the car will pull away so if I yes it, there are different different versions of uh... yes so if I put it into dynamic then you'll notice the car becomes more lively um, there's an entirely it, different set of gear ratios used isn't there yes and it's it it basically makes the um, performance as you'd expect it's quite a powerful car this so it's got 600 newton meters of torque 258 horsepower it's enormous um, torque for the horsepower as well that's yes. very very audi diesel power yes the engines are very efficiently well made and you can tell a mountain up a mountain <laughs> <laughs> i remember having my nose rubbed in the torque of a diesel once a turbo petrol car chap had a big turbo diesel with lots of digits and letters after the badge name on this product and he was towing a caravan and I, I thought I could overtake him up this hill in the Cairngorms. He pulled away from me. <laughs> I was humiliated and like, what does he provide? <laughs> and then I looked up what, uh, yes, what all those letters and digits meant. So is it correct that the TFSI on the back of uh, Audi stands for totally flipping speedy in it? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. No. no. What, what is the correct? So something's a childish though. So. Uh, it is turbo fuel stratified injection. Oh man! And they generally are the quickest ones. Uh, yeah, it depends really. Below so, the uh, below the serious sports models with the extra engineering that. Yeah, it's it's all dependent on the actual unit to be honest. So we okay. have TDI's TFSI. Yes. Um, TDI is your diesel model, uh, uh -huh. which this is a TDI, yep. and. Um, we don't offer a petrol variant of the Q7 in the UK, but there are other markets that do, I believe. Oh, but, really? Um, if you so that be the USA, I take it. Uh, yes, I think they do offer one, um, but it's it's all dependent, really, on the output of that particular engine. So, yes. say for example, if you take the A4 range, there is a two-litre TFSI petrol with 190 horsepower, or there is a two-litre TDI diesel with 190 horsepower wow and they're both quite different engines yes um, and you know you pick which version suits your needs the best really so if you if you live in town and you don't do very many miles and um, you want something that's got quite sprightly performance then the petrol is probably yes. best but then if you're doing long motorway journeys you have um, fairly sizable commutes um, you're doing constant speeds a lot then the diesel is would better. be the pick and it's solidly topical advice this very day there's been some uh, serious uh, stuff in the news about the diesel particulate filter abuse that has gone on and how that's going to stop at a BBC researcher on my case we had a lad who admitted having his DPF removed uh, okay as an environmentalist that was my degree course the thought of Removing a DPF from an old dirty diesel car is, you might as well pour oil into the trout stream, you're polluting. Yeah. <laughs> so you can probably feel, now that I've got it in the dynamic mode, so it was braking now because we're coming up to a, another roundabout. Again, this is doing it all itself. Because yes, there's no cars it, so coming, I don't need to touch the accelerator. It's more wibbly on the camera. I, did yes. have a, I had a really good go on this, to be honest, when I was uh, had my little drive. And, in the different, different modes and in dynamic mode it's it's pretty vigorous and it will accelerate more keenly than it did in efficiency so yes. I'll put it back into efficiency now so it doesn't bother the camera too you much you instantly see the shakiness of the image has gone a little bit less wibbly but uh, that was another thing I mean I'm no superstar motoring journalist but of course I have an opinion on driving every single car I've had to go on and, and there is a ridiculous, overused term for a large vehicle that's fabulously rigid and changes direction nicely. They, they always talk about flipping go-karts, don't they, mate? <laughs> Sorry, that old flaming cliche, but this really was uh, enormous fun to drive in. Or another one is handles like it's on rails. Oh, yeah, that's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, instant lack of respect for motoring journalists if they're hackling in cliche uses. Uh, you can get their poetic license endorsed, you know, for too much of that. <laughs> but yes, whilst the uh, first video was all about the uh, the audio, because there's so much technology in here, and audio really is my thing, I just knew I had failed the vehicle in its, oh my gosh, check out the technology going on here. Yeah. And even now, 
we've touched on it a bit. There's a whole load of cool, funky displays we saw going on on the fishery for the off-road stuff. Because although this is a serious road vehicle, it's that off-road thing which, um, it's not just, it looks a bit like an SUV, it's actually two-wheel drive and it's, it's for use in Chelsea. No. No, this is quite a capable car and as, a, as you uh, explained in your other video, there's different modes on this car that you can use when you are um, not on the road. So if you, if you take it off-road, then it has an all-road mode, it has a lift mode for the suspension as well. It helps with the ground clearance, um, it has a mode, whereas if you're going uh, down, down a steep slope, then it will gravel. modulate the speed. Yep. Yes. There's, uh, I think I've got, that's the only feature I've actually got, that one, that's uh, Yeah, that's it's a really uh, useful feature to have. And so you don't just careen down a scree slope if yes. it's all a bit splidgy. Yeah. A whole bunch of controls. But the uh, lifting suspension stuff is um, just beyond cool, that's so important as well if you are somewhere a bit proper lumpy and you don't want to hurt your vehicle. out to the cinema last night and, and I'm afraid I found one of your adverts a little bit painful for my past career. Oh really? Oh yes. How so? There's <laughs> a little smile in the middle. How so? He's slightly behind the camera. <laughs> right. It's uh, uh, an ad for the brand new car and it's referring to the fact that we so often meet other motorists who all of us will define as clowns and I'm afraid one of the biggest clown characters was Turbo Nut Up Git with his twaddled up car with a wing and a fin and a <laughs> baseball cap on it. They were my boys! <laughs> <laughs> and they're now clowns in the Audi advert, yes. They're not all clowns. It's all based on the individual, <laughs> isn't it? Of course, yes, but I'm uh, just doing it because I'm enjoying the wry smile we're just getting the corner of in the uh, rear view mirror there. Yes. But yes, I'm afraid I, I identify with that because I'm, I'm a pretty much defensive motorist. <laughs> Fairly low opinion of the... Uh, skills of many of my fellow drivers. Another feature that I, hopefully I'll be able to show you, but if not I'll explain it anyway, um, is that with the adaptive cruise control it has stop and go as well, which um, does That's what it says a on the tin. important thing. Yeah, so if <laughs> I'm coming up to a set of traffic lights, as per now this is what I was hoping would happen. Yes. Um, so I've got I'm the... watching the man's knees, they yep. steady, he's just hanging off the wheel, he's doing nothing, he's doing nothing. Um, oh, let's trust <laughs> I've the got the um, cruise control set, itself. it's going to stop itself and uh, they see they came on before before we could fully stop but if if the light had stayed red for longer yes. then the car would have stopped, the engine would have turned off and then when the traffic light turns green and the car in front moves away We would have carried on again. Yes. And yet it's adaptable enough to behave just like you and I would when the car just starts off as soon as you get there, she just carried on. That's actually pretty impressive too. It doesn't need to do the whole, it's got to stop now, it's got no, to stop. No, it so is it's not. Um, it's still no seeing what's going on and acting yeah. upon the information it's seeing. Of course, it's binary, but it doesn't feel binary in, in its operation. That's beautifully put. That's why you're the digital executive, yeah. Alex. You get that stuff. That's <laughs> so cool. No, that is, that's uh, heavy philosophical. It's an enormous thing. How do we turn digital into the analog, pleasant human experience? With music, it's the digital to analog converter. It's a very, very big issue. Because digital controlled things can have this cold, stark on off, you know, mm. not sort of. So to actually have that computer control behave just as if you had a really good driver in there, mm. and you're sitting there watching them do it. I just had an image of Will Smith sitting down and not paying attention in that amazing car in uh, In iRobot. As you correctly put, iRobot, yes, I yep. misidentified it as... So, actually, we released a concept recently at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Um, it's called the Audi Icon, uh -huh. and there are lots of similarities between the car in iRobot and the icon. So oh, the Star icon... Trek, eat your heart out. <laughs> Technology catching up with what some science fantasist wrote. So the icon doesn't have steering wheel, it doesn't have pedals, no. it has two lounge chairs, <laughs> and the lounge chairs can turn around as well. <laughs> not even watch where you're going. So yeah, that 
that is coming, but it's that's concept. How many years, Mr. Fisk? Uh, it's let's put it. Let's put it on record. This man is the digital executive of <laughs> Audi. It's, it's 2017. It's October. It's nearly Halloween. It's still a long way off. I'm not going to put a year on it. Nobody um, ever can. Every futurist always gets it wrong, and it's yeah. usually but that too short. Largely, um, it's guessed. too short because because of legislation. Yes. So. Uh, the, the technology. Catch up with the tech. Yeah, the technology is already there. The car exists. Yes. We have a concept and it works, but it's just waiting for the law to catch up, and uh, it will happen. Of course, it will happen, but we just need to wait for that. We need to make sure all the relevant um, systems are in place in terms of the road network as well. That's yes, because the you were saying about the geo fenced, yeah, autonomous uh, autobahn and in Deutschland and a couple of freeways in the USA yeah um, we like to think we're, we're jolly advanced but we need to uh, I think the M1 would be the first place that might happen in the UK hopefully um, yes. because it's a road that needs it let's be honest I'm um, afraid so but so this the icon Audi icon is level 5 so when I was saying before about the Audi A8 yes. and that has level 3 conditional autonomy yes uh, and level 5 is the term Yes. Is that, I've stolen that from you for today. Level five. Level five Level is full, five. full autonomy. Um, That's turn around and look deeply into your loved one's eyes without worrying how close you are to the car in front. Yes. Wow. Do you know what? I hate to say this. I'm 55. I could probably never turn that seat round and not watch the road in the same way that my darling wife always pays attention while I'm driving. She says, if I'm about to die, I'd like to know. <laughs> Well, that's it. There's Rather a grim thing to say to your husband. It's not just but going yes. to happen tomorrow. That's why it's a gradual process. Yes, of and course. It's, you know, it's the biggest change in the industry, really. In history since the red flag. Yeah, and... Walk in front of it with a red flag. The same with electric vehicles. Um, you know, it's, it's going to take time for it to bed in. Yes, but, but it's properly happening. It's not just a few funny little nutters and the thing that excites this environmental scientist because that was what he really calls those is that the infrastructure is now no longer becoming a vanity mm. it was elon musk's tesla power points that were in places like blue water really expensive and yeah i'll bless them they could just spend the money and leave it there mm -hmm. and now we've got the situation where at my local tube station at stanmore motorists with electric vehicles are getting a little bit narky about the fact that people just park on them and they're not protected mm. Westminster Council are talking about fitting an awful lot more of them and yeah you've got to build a chicken to lay the eggs and right now there's they're, you know the chicken building is really going on which is marvellous because uh, the motoring industry has uh, been there beforehand the cars were there first but you really had to be a bit of an early adopter to uh, go hybrid in the last four or five years I think so any plans for cordless charging for EVs there's a big old yes. pluggy do in the back of this car Yes, uh, so we will have an inductive charger for um, for some of the forthcoming models. Um, and that's basically, about installing it into your home. Yes, so in your garage, uh, you'll have a plate put in the garage floor, the and then over. you just park over it, and exactly, yeah, it will charge the car. It has to be the future, doesn't it? Yeah. I believe the uh, Rolls Royce people have got one of those, but that's uh, often the case. See if you can afford a quarter of a million quid. That's hmm. <laughs> early adopting technology. Although, uh, to some degree, of course, um, the Audi brand is by no means a uh, super value Aldi supermarket type thing. You're, you're a bit more Waitrose, chap. <laughs> People can't afford to uh, indulge in emerging technology in Audi. Well, that's and that it. is the enduring, enduring German slogan for all time, of course. Bring yes, it forward. Of course. And yeah, is. Is what we're about, Vorsprung Dirk Technik, yeah, yeah. and it's um, you know that's one of the reasons this car in particular, you know, is um, is eighty four thousand pounds, I believe, on the road. But I think this one was eighty six with all the options. But there's a reason yeah. for that, and yes. because it's one of our press vehicles, it's so we can demonstrate the technology that's available. Because every last action is going to be on board, and of course, this is yes. loaded. Yes, because yes. otherwise, if it's just in a brochure, then nobody's going to know about it. So. You get it out there and you see it working like you are today then it shows exactly what's capable what the car is capable of now the one thing we haven't captured on screen is this head-up display green foot thing which uh, was about persuading you to decelerate if I zoom 
my uh, polarizer back in there. Will we be able to get a screen that tells you to put your foot off the accelerator? Should do. There we go. So it will come up um, by the miles per hour symbol. Zoomed in and polarized. See if it will do it here. Uh, because once you've got the adaptive cruise control set, obviously it does it for you, so um, it doesn't need to tell you. Yes. But because I'm accelerating manually now, it should it should tell me. Funnily enough, I've got the uh, head-up display perfectly overlaying the white line at the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to focus it in there a bit. Ah, see, I just the pedal. Just gave me a bit of feedback there, a small pulse, and you can see the green shoe oh, appearing. Oh, I missed it. It's, it was overlain by the Weisse Streifen Grüne Rand. Lines from Kraftwerk's Autobahn. <laughs> White stripes, oh, we green can, ribbons. We can try that again then. Yes. So we'll try it on the way back here. So basically, it gives, you, it gives you a little nudge to say, if you want to come off the gas now, yes. then you can. And can save fuel doing it. I just have this urge to try and capture it on camera. Ooh. There we go. I'm slightly better focused on the head-up display now. So, where you're looking on there is where the um, speed limit sign is. It's on the right-hand right side. Yeah, yes, just we, on the right-hand side. We just side. so happened to get the, uh, the white line paint completely occluding it on the... <laughs> <laughs> just because of the position of the car. Again, well, you can lower there, the, the there display it for me, sir, because it, 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 sure. you can do the height of thing, can't you? Oh, no, that's up. That's it. A little bit further. Lovely. Oh, oh yes, now I can see the green foot. Yes. That's all it was. It was a little bit too high. And it's bright enough to show over the white line, despite my breathing. Oh, now, oh, head up display, goodness. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what we're talking about. Check out the colours, the definition, the amount of information. Yes, we've been astonished, delighted. Oh, my God about the thin film transistor super brightness of what are several sets of screenage in this Audi Q7, but that head-up display, complete with that little green foot. As I say, I talked about it last time, but when that happened, I went, ooh, and I lifted me foot off the accelerator and then laughed throat to it myself. <laughs> so, yeah, it did it to me. It did the same thing there. Yes. So it just gives you a bit What's of a the tap? green bit on the right there right now? So it? that's the adaptive cruise control. Ah, gotcha. Lovely. That really is superb. Look at the brightness of that display. That's superb. And if I move it up just one notch, can you can you still see that? Can you see some more information now? Or? Um, actually, it was better off further down, dear boy. Okay. Just because of where I've got it polarised and fixed. So I'm getting such a perfect reflection. We can actually see that the screen is lying on its back on the dashboard, and I'm even getting a little bit of dashboard in there. Oh, fine. But that's just to do with the optics. Um, the actual subjective experience for the person sat there is all you see is those colours just hanging there in focus magically above where you're looking it's quite remarkable and it's actually giving me more information than you can see on the camera screen at the moment so it's so really, I've, giving... got a, I've got a roundabout a speed limit uh, an actual speed the green footy symbol oh good okay you have got oh yes I've got that. full gala and everything good, previous good. head up displays only ever been one colour a couple of bits of information but yes it's about that LED tech it's so flaming bright now they're brilliant <laughs> sorry yes literally tell me to come off the gas. Yes, um, and after all the filming, I think I finally got both displays in at one level of polarisation at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's tremendous. Hope the focus isn't off. Looks reasonably crisp from here. <coughs> On the front of the vehicle. What a technical tour de force. I don't think 
at least I'm not aware of, not that I'm encyclopedic, of uh, any other vehicles out there that have got quite this level of uh, technical new going on inside. And that includes the, uh, the other German brand that do like to brag about being at the leading edge of tech. I don't think it's necessarily the case. So, so much for giving up your time today to come trundling around the boulevards of yes. Milton Keynes here for us. No, thanks for coming, Adam. It's always a pleasure. Yes, the, uh, the audio is uh, where I start, but the, um, the whole autonomy in motoring and uh, that science side to uh, driving is something that groups me enormously, so I'd love to be at the leading edge of that as these things develop nearby. Indeed. Yes. I think I'll have to get myself across to Frankfurt. Hmm. Should I come to motor show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my German accent is quite good, but my vocabulary is appalling. <laughs> So I can tell people that I learned German for four years, but I've forgotten most of it now, which is a pity. But set so well that they will nearly always launch into uh, an explication of what's going on, and I have to apologise and ask them to slow down. Entschuldigung, ein bisschen langsamer. Yeah, yeah. much auto barn driving yourself Alex? Yeah a lot really so when we have um, media trips yes over in Germany then we'll um, fascinated about what the corporate view is on rate of progress on the auto barn in company cars. Well that's a good question actually I am um, I'm not sure. Um, One tends to drive as quick as is sensible for the road conditions. Yeah of course. Yes, of course. Of course. It's, um, but they do obey the flipping rules. If you go past a Kreutz or a junction, you slow down to 110 kilometers per hour, which is just a little bit above 60 odd, or else you're in proper trouble. Yeah. And it's so much bigger, and so much of it is only two lanes, so it kind of makes sense to get out of each other's way. We behave like that pretty much on the A1, don't we? A little bit better than normal. Well, it's an in interesting feature of the uh, A8, actually. So uh, German road etiquette um, tells you that if there is an emergency response vehicle coming through then I believe that you should pull to the left of your lane and yes. let it through yes and the car will do that as well um, wow how does it know is it is it sensing the blue the lights sensors, or is it yeah it's um, so it's again it's you know it's trying to make that transition from from you being in charge of the car really being the daddy yeah yes so it doesn't feel like a massive massive step change Interestingly, actually, I think there is also, um, with all engineering and electronics and technology, there has to be a philosophy and, uh, dare I say, a personality behind it. Um, and in my opinion, I am now fully formed, I think that Audi's view of autonomy is one about assisting, uh, believing in your driver as having some kind of degree of skill and decision-making process and in involving you. Yeah. Whereas the brand that I'm driving, I don't think they really like motorists and they'd really rather that the stupid people weren't involved at all. And that by 2020 they say, nobody will die in our cars. Um, but yes, there's a certain nannying approach to their tech, which uh, frankly had me turn one or two of the bits off. There was a warning system that was a little bit premature, I think. Anyway, nothing to do with this car. Well, but that's, yeah, I think that's the Audi the approach is, is about treating your motorists, your customers, um, as, as being a little bit cleverer than certain other brands do, I think. That's the thing, we um, we treat them all as assistant systems because that's what they are. And if you do want to turn them off, then you can, you don't have to use them, but they're 
when you are making a journey and you do feel a bit tired or you do want the car to take over yes. it's there to make it easier for you it's not there to take anything away from the your driving trip. pleasure it's fascinating to find out after a few years of these being out some uh, feedback from drivers as to how they use the systems and which ones they find absolutely indispensable and nearly always on mm. it's like I admit I don't often use the flappy paddles in my car <laughs> I don't really know what the heck I'm doing Funny enough, I have a, uh, I'm a chicken that knows a fox. There's a chum of mine, there's a traffic cop, and he says, I used to think I was really good. And then I got in, and this chap who struck to her, he said, Oh, do you know, I thought of rubbish. <laughs> I would have hated to have been in that car while they were negotiating the roundabouts of Brighton because they're pursuit drivers. And I think they have a different adrenal gland to the rest of us. Yes. That and, uh, yes, radios. Never run from the police, boys. It's extremely stupid. You will not do 186,000 miles a second. And their gang's bigger. Just don't. So this uh, lovely October day has been a bit unseasonably warm lately, although it was cool last night. Nice and clear day for travelling around Milton Keynes. So I think this is a good point for uh, Alex Fisk and Adam to sign out here at the wheel of the Audi Q7. And just uh, remains for me to thank. Well, everybody at Audi for letting me come back and have another go on this car. Alex, thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. You'd make a great telly presenter. You're driving, you're <laughs> docking, and it's looking safe and everything, and you didn't even misbehave. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you.